Madam Secretary, first of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. And, and going on from there, we were looking at a website of your supporters here, and uh, lo and behold, on that it says Condi for 2008. Oh, my goodness. But uh, that, I, I, that's I a bit premature. I, I, I think sh no one should count on such things. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly if you only just start. That's yeah, right, yeah. that's right. And uh, the trip here, the Europe part of the trip, is really a... You're setting, setting it, you want to set up more of a dialogue than a monologue and, and some bridge building. Well, it's very important to come to Europe, our key allies and global partnership. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. We have such wonderful common values that unite us. We've done so much hard work together in the past. We've uh, faced down uh, dictatorships before and spread freedom throughout uh, the whole of Europe. And so I've really come here to say, let's have a dialogue about how we can approach the very large agenda before us so that in the long run, history judges as well for having used this wonderful alliance to promote freedom and peace. And the practical things at the moment uh, would be, for instance, that you've got to discuss presumably are arms to China, uh, breaking the embargo of arms yes. to China, where there is a, an honest disagreement on that, isn't there? There is, and friends will sometimes disagree, and we have to be able to, to do that and to try to work our way through it. We have concerns about uh, the lifting of the embargo because we have deep concerns about the military balance in uh, East Asia. We are concerned that uh, there could be a shift that might affect American military, uh, the American military balance. We're also, of course, concerned because since the arms embargo was levied at the time of Tiananmen, we would not want to send uh, wrong signals to the Chinese about human rights concerns. But we are still in discussion with our European allies. They are open to our concerns. I've found that the discussions are open and fruitful, and we should continue those discussions. And in terms of Iran, for instance, there's, there's a, a difference of approach there, but do you find what the Europeans have done in terms of the agreements that uh, the three of them have made with Iran, is that helpful to what you want to do because you've really got a total ostracism of Iran at the moment? Well, any effort to get Iran to live up to its international obligations that can succeed, we will support because, of course, Iran needs to live up to its international obligations. It cannot try and get nuclear weapons under cover of civilian nuclear programs. We believe that the Iranians uh, are being offered an opportunity. They ought to take it. But would you welcome a regime change in Iran? Well, I, all of us would have to agree that uh, the behavior of this Iranian regime in supporting terrorism, in uh, sowing instability in the Middle East, in the way it treats its own people, is not a regime to be admired. And uh, certainly the Iranian people deserve the same opportunities for freedom and liberty that are beginning to take hold in other parts of the Middle East. And Vice President uh, Cheney, noting this threat that uh, Iran poses, went on to say, given that Iran has a stated policy that their objective is the destruction of Israel, the Israelis might well decide to act first and let the world uh, worry about the consequences afterwards. If when you get to see Mr. Sharon, he said, he says, would you really like us to do what uh, Dick Cheney suggested? Um, would you really like us to go ahead? Would you say yes well, or no? Obviously, what the vice president is pointing to is the destabilizing effect should Iran get nuclear weapon. And we all have to make certain that we're working uh, as hard as we can to get the Iranians to live up to their international obligations, to get verification, to assign an additional protocol, to allow the inspectors from the IAEA to come in on SNAP inspections so that we don't get to the place that Iran can destabilize the region with a, a nuclear program. So would you say yes or no, or maybe? Well, I'm not going to speculate, but I will say <laughs> that obviously anything uh, that would lead to conflict in this region would be a terrible, terrible thing. And the Iranians need to, uh, to live up to their international obligations so we don't face any such point. The president said that there could be a Palestinian state during the Bush presidency. Could there be a democratic Iran in that time, or is that too ambitious? Well, we never know. 
Uh, I'm an old Soviet specialist, yes. and I don't think anybody would have thought that the Soviet Union was going to collapse peacefully as quickly as it did. But obviously, the goal here is uh, first and foremost to deal with Iran's destabilizing behavior in the international system. It really is uh, a chief thunder of terrorism. I'm here to talk about an emerging peace process between the Israelis and the Palestinians. One of the most important barriers to getting to that peace is the activity of Palestinian rejectionist groups and of groups like Hezbollah. Iran is the key supporter of these rejectionist groups. So Iran is a destabilizing force in the international system and we need unity of purpose, unity of message to Iran to stop those activities. Because unlike Iraq, there's, there's not the same, perhaps not at all, a military option in Iran. It's so big, there are 70 million people. It's much more difficult militarily than Iraq, isn't well, it? Well, the President's made very clear that we believe dealing with the Iranian situation diplomatically yeah. is the key. And that's why I'm here for discussions. Uh, we do need a strong message to Iran. We need a united front on the Iranian nuclear program. We need as great democracies to tell the Iranian people that uh, they deserve a better future than they currently, than the present that they currently have. But we believe that this is a time for diplomacy. This is a time to uh, muster our considerable influence. Uh, we, the alliance, our considerable influence, our considerable uh, soft power, if you will, to bring uh, great changes in the world. And Middle East, obviously, is a crucial part of uh, your trip. And I suppose that the, when you're talking when you're talking to the Palestinians, presumably you feel that uh, Mr. Abbas has really shown his good faith by what he's done so far in terms of the terrorists. Well, so far the election of uh, Mahmoud Abbas has been a real plus for the process. And uh, he's demonstrated that he wants to make changes. Uh, he's a person who says that the armed intifada uh, has failed, that it is time now to move to negotiations. Uh, he has a lot of work to do, of course, to really stop terrorism and to also make sure that terrorist groups cannot just turn terrorism on and off as they wish. But uh, we are impressed with what he has done. We hope he will continue to do more. And uh, as the President said in his State of the Union address, we stand by ready to help and indeed will engage to try and help the parties. And in terms of, in terms of training, other countries can help with training the Palestinians in certain ways, can't it, in terms of security? Yes, terrorism. the Palestinians will need help in uh, bringing, to better, bringing together and unifying their security forces. They will need help in building the institutions that will become the foundation of a state. They certainly need help in economic reconstruction, uh, reconstruction job creation, uh, doing something about the terrible plight of the Palestinian people that uh, really the Intifada has worsened and Israel has obligations uh, to try and create conditions for this new Palestinian yeah, state. Two things people talk about that they say you'll be discussing with them particularly obviously is the idea of a real freeze on settlements and the second thing is the root of the uh, of the wall which probably will stay because it seems to have saved lives but in some places it's been very insensitively done and people 20 meters from their neighbors have to go five miles up the yes. road and come down again. And, and it should get back to the green route that they, they were saying. Well, we certainly hope that uh, there will come a day when one doesn't need such walls. Yeah. And uh, the yeah. Israelis, yeah. in the meantime, we've been very clear that they should not do anything that prejudges final status border lines and that this, uh, this route, the route of this fence should do everything that it can to ease the plight of the Palestinians, not contribute to it. So all you've heard and, and are about to see um, convinces you that the President might be right that this could, this could be done, a Palestinian state in four years? Well, I won't put a timeline on it, but I do think that we can get to two states living side by side. We have to. The yeah. peace of the Middle East demands that uh, there one day be a Palestine and an Israel, Israel living side by side in peace.